for tuning in to Sounds Like Home. This is our fourth installment now of a virtual festival highlighting Minnesota artists. And I am so excited about the lineup for today's artists, including this next artist. He goes by the stage name Freak. Offstage, he's known as Gabe Roderick. And I'm going to say hello to Gabe now. How's it going, Gabe? Good. How are you, Andrea? I'm doing all right. You know, <laughs> hanging in there. Yeah. Yes, we have to. <laughs> yes. Well, I am so excited to talk to you today because um, I've just been captivated by the most recent songs that you've released and the messages behind the songs, and I know we're going to have a lot to dig into. Um, you're going to start with the song Bag Lady, and I think all of the songs that you're going to perform today are from your record, right? Decomposed? Yep. Yeah, I released that record a little over a year ago. Um, it was kind of my first um, endeavor into this new project, Freak. Um, yeah. All right. Is there anything that we should know about Bag Lady before we hear that one? Yeah. Uh, Bag Lady is, um, it's about, it, it came from um, a woman who used to live across my alley. Um, I live in the house that I grew up in, so I've known her for um many years and she was evicted from her home um had a lot of mental health issues um and ended up being homeless and living out of her car out on the street she'd park out outside of our house in the like kind of middle of winter there were some nights that she probably shouldn't have been out there um but it it's it's all it, it comes from her and um you know a lot, a lot of the people you see on the street who don't have homes um and it's uh kind of a um flipping the bird to the man i guess in a way all right well if you're just joining us we're about to hear the first performance from freak this is sounds like home Said, you got. She 
Soar down the stairway to heaven Swang out wide on hell's iron gate She knows she's beautiful She knows she's unusual Shall saddle up on a giant thick noodle neck Try to dress us on downtown Tell the mayor, stick your money in your mouth She's the bag lady She's gonna take your She's gonna take you That was the artist who goes by Freak performing the song Bag Lady for Sounds Like Home, the current virtual festival showcasing Minnesota music. This is our fourth installment, and I have really been enjoying this festival because I get a chance to talk to people. Uh, I've been making most of my radio program alone in my home, and gosh, it's good to see people's faces and actually have conversations and <laughs> catch up with people and hear how they've been doing in 2020. Um, Gabe, you have had uh, quite a year in 2020. You were part of the Cedar Commissions earlier this year when we were still able to gather at, um, at live shows. Can you tell me a little bit about the process of actually doing a, a commissioned work and what that was like for you? Yeah, um, I, I really enjoyed the process. Um, I built my set off of a, a song I released over the summer called My Anger is a Sun slash Poor But Free. Um, and I, I, I really appreciate having like external deadlines where I, where I don't have to make my own deadlines and I'm kind of forced to finish work by a certain time. Um, and that was very helpful. And I, I also, use the commission process and um, the money that I got to kind of expand my my bubble of musicians that I work with. And then it also gave me the opportunity to explore a little more with spoken word over, over music, um, which was really fun. And I think it worked really well. It does work really well. I've been listening to that song a lot, the My Anger is the Sun um, recording that you released. And I just loved what you had to say about, um, I think especially maybe here in Minnesota, we're a little afraid of anger sometimes or want to downplay it or see it as a very yeah. um, negative force. And it's a very natural human emotion. And for those that um, maybe didn't catch your commission or, or see the interview that you did with the Cedar, can you talk a little bit about your reflection on anger as a tool and as a as a positive force yeah um yeah i mean that that idea of anger being a tool it it, it comes from me being a pretty angry person um growing up my parents got divorced and i repressed a lot of those feelings and then i had my injury in uh 2008 when i was 16 and after that was, you know, a, a very angry person. But what I wasn't like outwardly angry. I didn't like have outbursts or anything like that. Just kind of a, like an even keel anger happening. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, over the years I started to realize that and I was like, well, is anger the reason that you've gotten through so much of your struggle? Um, and I think that's the case. And I, I, 
I see anger as um, a, a, a really powerful tool, or tool for change, um, but only when it's paired with hope. I think when you when you pair fear and anger, it it becomes really destructive and chaotic. But when you pair it with hope, it it is a it moves a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah, that was something that was really striking to me is that although you had recorded and written that song before, um, you know, so many of the big events that we've all gone through this year, it just felt so relevant <laughs> this summer, mm -hmm. you know, witnessing the uprising in Minneapolis and what happens when you don't express that anger and it, then there's an explosion. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's been a really powerful song and I really appreciate listening to it. Cool. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, well, I want to, um, I was going to say we can chat some more, but maybe we should get into some more music um, and then we can have a little bit more of the conversation. Um, so you're going to play another song from the album that you released last year, uh, Decompose. Is there anything specific we should know about Broken Puppet? Yeah, this, um, this song is very much about my injury. I have a C5 spinal cord injury. And it's a song that I'm still learning from. I've, I've tried to figure out like where some of the ideas in the song come from. It's coming from my body before my injury. Well, if you're just joining us, I'm talking to the artist known as Freak right now, also known as Gabe Roderick. And we're gonna hear another performance. This is Broken Puppet here on our Sounds Like Home Festival. There's a fire in the freezer There's some blood on the rose There's a broken puppet on the wall I just saw his eyes glow I thought he was just a limb machine That was damaged by the Rabbit hole, free fall 
feeling like a Copy robe, will you tell me how you bleed on your Feel on your Be on your If you're just tuning in, this is Sounds Like Home, the Currents Virtual Festival showcasing Minnesota music, and I'm joined right now by Freak. We just heard the song Broken Puppet from last year's album, Decompose. So, Gabe, earlier when we were chatting, you talked about kind of this season of Freak as a, a project that you've been developing and that this album was really your first big statement piece. Can you talk a little bit more about developing this project and also returning to music after your accident and discovering new ways to play. Yeah, um, the that that EP album Decompose um, was pretty much the first time that I um, revisited the piano um, because before my injury I played piano for about 11 years started when I was like five years old um, and was was pretty good and set to was gonna go to Perpich Center for the Arts I wanted to be a pianist um, and so decompose and three of the songs on there I think um, are me with a pencil and a brace and just plucking one note at a time um, singing over top of that and um, that was probably 10, 10 11 years post injury um, so it took me a long time to get back to that place and I've, I've really enjoyed that process of writing music on the piano again um, and then as um, as I got that out, I started to dig into um, some of my more political music, I guess. My Anger is the Sun, How Are You Not Freaking Out, um, Patience. Um, I kind of all view those as very political, um, but also very emotional and, and uh, deeply me um and f freak for me is uh kind of similar to another project i have a cripple's dance um which i use uh the music for that production um it's all kind of about taking back my body and taking back you know who i want to be who i wanted to be before my injury um and tr trying to love myself and live the best that i can in this new body and i i tend to lean towards very dark gritty ideas and stories and um so the idea of taking this word freak and 
um, making it meaningful and sometimes beautiful and sometimes ugly and, you know, showing, trying to show all of me um, through freak and then a cripple's dance as well, using the word cripple. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll um, have one more performance from you. This is your most epic song on your record, Decompose House Song. Is there anything else you want to tell people about this one? Um, this is, another. I think, another piece just about the body that I live in, getting, getting used to a new body um, and using a lot of imagery from, I don't know, the, the buildings that I grew up in. I grew up grew up in this house that I'm in, grew up going to a really old church, um, and kind of using those spaces where I found community and built a body of people. Um, and that's kind of what this song is. Very cool. Well, thanks again so much for joining us. And this is Freak performing house song here on Sounds Like Home.
Thanks for tuning in to Sounds Like Home, a virtual festival celebrating Minnesota music. Sounds Like Home and the artists performing during the festival is sponsored by Go Athletic Apparel and made possible by Minnesota's Legacy Amendment and you. Your support keeps the current strong and makes sure that independent music and the emerging artists featured today always have a home on the current. We are immensely grateful all month long. We're saying thank you with special programming as part of our month of gratitude. All Sounds Like Home sessions will be archived at thecurrent.org because great music lives here. Thank you. Hey everybody, thanks so much for tuning in to Sounds Like Home. I'm Andrea Swenson, host of The Local Show on The Current. This is our fourth installment of our virtual festival showcasing Minnesota music. And right now I'm so excited to be joined by an artist who has participated lately in the Me Too Minneapolis compilation and also has been working on solo music. Please welcome Ro. Hello Ro, hey. how's it going? It's going well, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited that you could be part of this. So I'm really excited to talk to you about developing a solo project. And I know that you've also been making music with Static Panic. So I just want to get a, caught up on everything that you have been doing. But we'll start with some music and then we'll get into a little bit more of a conversation. 
So you want to start with a cover. Tell me about mm -hmm. this song, Malibu. So um, this song came out, I want to say, like pretty late in the summer. And um, I've always been inspired by Kim Petras um, before even like she was releasing a whole lot of music with um, this producer that I kind of I'm a I'm a really big fan of, but also like, you know, take a lot of inspiration from um, Von Oliver. Um, this track is just very well, as we're getting into like the more like the colder months, I just felt like something that reminds us of the warmer weather might, you know, like be a great starting point to kind of, you know, pep us into feeling at least warm inside a little bit um, before we before we hunker down and, and really um, get settled in for the winter. So um, I'm going to be performing uh, Malibu by Kim Petras. I'm excited. Great. I'm excited too. This is Ro performing for Sounds Like Home. If you're just joining us, this is Sounds Like Home, the Currents Virtual Festival showcasing Minnesota music. And that was a performance by Ro. It was a cover of the Kim Petras song, Malibu. And I'm talking to Ro right now. And I really want to know more about developing your solo project in recent years because I got to know you through um, your performances in Static Panic. But tell me about venturing off on this new uh, side and developing your solo uh, output. 
Mm -hmm. So a lot of things have been really challenging for all of us about 2020, right? So the the one like really grateful opportunity that I've had, or like the opportunity that I've been most grateful for is to go full-time uh, producing music for uh, other artists. So I um, now run a small recording studio out of uh, my apartment and um, that has not only like opened up a lot of uh, creative opportunities in terms of the genres that I'm starting to like tap into, but also um, the the kind of collaborations that I'm starting to to um, develop and and kind of uh, facilitate. Um, Static Panic has been for so long um, a, a good like kind of hit the ground running style of like pushing my creative production techniques to the limit. And I kind of have been, you know, utilizing my experiences with those folks to um, get more used to a creative, like live performance aspect, as well as the, um, just like the things that can be developed in a band dynamic. Um, so we spent a lot of time writing and um, together. And I recently, I would say uh, within the last couple of months, we went underwent some, uh, some, some member changes. So it was, um, you know, like time to kind of start to reinvent that sound, but it also gave me the opportunity to kind of um, challenge myself to, to be able to um, develop a sound and, kind of create based on all of these different experiences from all these different kinds of artists that I was working with to be able to um, create something that felt like a, a unique palette, something that I could draw from to start to generate my own sound, my own voice. Um, I mean, a lot of Static Panic in terms of the lyrics and stuff are were primarily my creation, but I would, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity that uh, that this Me Too Minneapolis project has offered me to be able to also kind of pursue, uh, you know, something beyond to evolve as a, as an artist, as as a as a musician, and kind of figure out what what uh, what holding my own in on the stage kind <laughs> of feels like. Um, I've been, you know, um, blessed to be. Uh, collaborating with a lot of the artists that I'm working with on on smaller projects here and there, and and you'll probably start to see some of those projects evolve. Um, you know, I've got um, some works with um, Sim One. If you don't know who who that is, um, yeah. they're an electric, yeah, electronic, um, you know, uh, act, and and they're phenomenal. I love I love working with them. Um, Once more, Autumn, uh, Diva J. Um, couple of other, oh, uh, Alien Book Club. Um, I've been working with Allison from Alien Book Club on some some personal work. So um, I'm just excited to, to mess around with a bunch of different instruments and, and inspirations and, and start to, to build what that feels like for me as well, so. Wow, it just seems like it's such an open exploratory time for you. That's so cool. Well, let's listen to your performance of Sides to Lonely and then we'll keep talking. Uh, this is Ro, and you're tuned in right now to the current Sounds Like Home virtual festival showcasing Minnesota music. Here's Ro.
Hey, if you're just joining us, this is Sounds Like Home, the Currents Virtual Festival showcasing Minnesota music. I'm Andrea Swenson, host of The Local Show, and right now I'm chatting with Ro. You just caught a performance of the song Sides to Lonely, which was featured on the Me Too Minneapolis compilation that just came out. Now, did you make a special video for that song as well to um, include in the performances? I can't remember if you did a live performance or if it was a music video. Yes. Yeah, so what I ended up doing for the uh, for the performance uh, was I had kind of a, a technical snafu um, and the original project, well, so my computer updated and uh, I lost a couple of plugins that were, um, I, I guess, you know, like to not bore you with the, the, the technical bits of it, like old school versus new school in terms of like the coding. And so I lost a bunch of the project. And so I ended up taking some of the stems from the original song and kind of building a new version of the song, kind of a live version and uh, performed that 
So I, you know, like took the time to rehearse it and kind of like figure out the technology piece of like what a live version of it would feel like um, in a way that I could be comfortable uh, performing it on my own. Wow. So what is it like for you to move from performing with a band? Obviously, we don't have live shows at the moment, um, but you're performing virtually. And, and for uh, online audiences, what is it like for you to shift into that role as the main person in a project? Um, it's been good. It's been uh, certainly challenging um, because I, I think that I am used to having the second person when I'm like stressing out before the take, like, you got this, like you're, you're in it, you're gonna be great. You're gonna like, like, we got this, we've rehearsed enough, like we're gonna be fine. <clears throat> I don't have that extra, you know, voice in my head. I just have the one that's telling me that things are going to go wrong. <laughs> so <laughs> getting used to like being able to, to build my own confidence, but also trust in my ability as, as a, a solo performer to continue to build uh, some sense of interest uh, and like just, just trusting that like the, the platform that I'm on is going to be, you know, like building me up in terms of the foundation of, of feeling, feeling uh, valuable to, to the art scene right now. Uh, it certainly is hard to, to feel like you're making kind of the same moves that you're making when you're not in front of hundreds of people uh, with a group of people who also have, you know, taken the time to devote to, uh, you know, understanding the music and, and getting it under their fingers. It's just, it's, it's a very different dynamic, uh, but it's still nice to see, you know, um, receptive folks that will reach out and say, hey, I saw your performance or, you know, like I, I, I heard you on the radio and, you know, like those opportunities are still, still thankfully from time to time, you know, not as frequently, but certainly still common. And uh, I, you know, I'm very grateful for that. I will say I miss uh, being, being down by Lake De Macosca and getting recognized for being in static panic and stuff like that. <laughs> like uh, that certainly has happened from time to time. And, and I, 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 I will say that I miss, uh, you know, miss the human interaction pieces of, of the art and being a part of this art community. Uh, it, it certainly is, is, is tough, but we're finding a way we're finding a way while we've, we've yeah. got what we've got. So. Yeah. I've been wondering a lot about that, you know, how can we still stay connected? Um, we're about to head into a winter and that was always, in my opinion, like the time when local musicians would seem to take over all of the venues and you could go out and see, you know, these great showcases and things and, and how can we stay connected and, and keep things um, moving in the scene? Are there things that you've taken away from this experience of moving into more of a um, producer role and working out of your home and, and not having those live shows. Are there things that, that you've gotten out of this that you want to continue uh, moving forward or that you hope that we carry into whatever our next normal is going to be after all of this? Absolutely. Um, during this time of complete isolation. Um, I have actually been working on a small side project uh, that is, it felt like it was something that was important that I wish that I had had uh, while I was developing as an artist. Um, and it's a resource of, or, you know, some form of a list of, of um, local artists, actually local and remote um, artists and businesses that are interested in um, contributing uh, their time, inventory, and resources to Black musicians of Minnesota. Um, so I'm calling it the Black Musician Support Network. Um, I generated a small questionnaire that uh, you know fills out into a Google Sheet, um, and it's all kind of hosted on my website. But it's you know a list of free resources for uh, by POC musicians of Minnesota to kind of complete their projects in the most you know like polished and 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 completed way that they possibly can. Uh, I have kind of hopes to turn it into some form of 
nonprofit, something that would be self-sustaining that could potentially, you know, bring in funds that could uh, allow for us to have opportunities for for black musicians that are free that wouldn't normally be um, at no cost and and just the the donation aspect is really what what has inspired me um, but also the ability to build community within that and start to network in places and and with people that they may not have had originally the opportunity to Wow. Well, you have to keep me updated on the progress of that. I would love to help support that any way I can. That is great. Thank you. I liked your quote. I think it was in the City Pages article about um, Me Too Minneapolis and envisioning, was it like a cracked parking lot <laughs> that we're all pulling apart? Yeah, yeah. I think the metaphor was like, yeah, exactly. It's it's a yeah cracked parking lot that's being renovated and just like dug out from the ground up. And it's like, okay, who are we amplifying? Who are we celebrating? What are the voices saying that are in our scene right now? And how do we support the ones that hold so much love for the art that they're doing, for the city we live in, for the people around them, for the other artists that also have, you know, love within their visions. I love that. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this Sounds Like Home Festival. I'm so glad that you could take part. Thank you for your work on the Me Too Minneapolis compilation as well. It's just been such a wonderful, positive movement to watch unfold over the last few months. Um, you're going to close with another song, Nothing Personal. What do you want to tell us about this one? Well, uh, this one is, um, so as I was mentioning before, I've been doing a lot of production work uh, for other artists and I'm gonna be joined by Diva J, who's a local black queer uh, Minneapolis rapper, musician, artist, uh, who I have been grateful to have the opportunity to produce an EP for. Um, so that will be up, upcoming pretty shortly here. Uh, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to hearing people's responses to the things that they have to say and just being like having that again, you know, like part of digging that up. Like, I just, I feel like, like they have so many little seeds to plant that are just nurturing to, to like inclusivity and, and other experiences that we just don't hear enough on, on the radio, on, um, in, 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 you know, on bills, on, you know, any, any number of, of places. I just, I'm, I'm really grateful to be able to, um, also be able to amplify those voices, but to be collaborating with such an artistic vision that has so much passion and heart beyond what, uh, what, what I, you know, even understand about the world as it is right now. Um, it's just, it's, it's a beautiful opportunity. So, I'm excited. Um, I wrote the, so I produced the, originally produced the beat and I sent it to them and they were like, I have to rap on this. Like it needs to be my piece. And then I wrote the hook and they were like, can we please collab? And the rest is history. So. All right. I can't wait to hear it. Well, thank you again for being part of this festival. It was really wonderful to catch up with you. And thank you so much for the opportunity, Andrea. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, here is Nothing Personal, Ro and Diva J performing on Sounds Like Home. Personal. I won't have to let you know. Nothing personal. I won't have to 
what they say I can't. I'm getting my chips a glam. Don't need you for attention. I know that you don't understand. It's actually part of the problem. Solutions moving forward and getting that Peter Pan. Whoever has a next, don't stay in his never land. My warning, it isn't safe like the place that I keep my band. That's when he'll snap me to play. Too far gone, I'll be no Drake. Diva J, busting through the gates of a homophobic rap game. Lost in his own mind, but standing in the crowd Always turning up, but scared of the come down Crying out for help, yet no one hears a sound Till he, will he, feel me now Lost in your own mind, but standing in the crowd Always turning up, but scared of the come down Crying out for help, yet no one hears a sound Did you want me to leave? Did you want me to say it's nothing personal? Say A <laughs> 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 <Our> period. <laughs> uh, I love us. Thanks for tuning in to Sounds Like Home, a virtual festival celebrating Minnesota music. Sounds Like Home and the artists performing during the festival is sponsored by Go Athletic Apparel and made possible by Minnesota's Legacy Amendment and you. Your support keeps the current strong and makes sure that independent music and the emerging artists featured today always have a home on the current. We are immensely grateful all month long. We're saying thank you with special programming as part of our month of gratitude. All Sounds Like Home sessions will be archived at thecurrent.org because great music lives here. Thank you. Hey everybody, thanks so much for tuning in to Sounds Like Home. This is The Current's virtual festival celebrating Minnesota music. I'm Andrea Swenson, host of The Local Show, which you can hear on Sunday nights from 6 to 8 p.m. I'm really excited now to be joined by an artist who is very familiar to our audiences, but this is a new project for Jeremy Messersmith mixtape for the Milky Way. Hey Jeremy, how's it going today? Uh, it's going very well. Thanks, Andrea. How are you? I'm doing all right, you know? <laughs> what a weird year, but here we are. I'm really glad to be able to connect with you and catch up with you. <laughs> same, same, good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. Well, we're gonna jump right into some music and then you and I can chat a little bit. Um, you wanted to start with the song Heavy. What can you tell us about this one? Uh, it's just a, just a little love song. That's really all I have to... All I have to say about it, I think. So let's let's do it. All right. It's mixtape for the Milky Way here on Sounds Like Home. Well, I wanna fall in love before I die. Happy just knowing I didn't waste my time Don't want to spend my nights cold and lonely But I just want someone who really knows me 
If you're just joining us, this is Sounds Like Home, the current virtual festival showcasing Minnesota music. I'm Andrea Swenson, and I'm connected right now with Jeremy Messersmith. That was a song from his new project mixtape for the Milky Way called Heavy. Jeremy, I would love to hear the story of developing this new project. Where did this come from, and how long have you been working on this mixtape for the Milky Way? Uh, I... <laughs> I've been trying to make this album for uh, probably five or six years or so. I just had these songs that were kind of popping up uh, while working on other albums, and I could never figure out where they should really fit. They didn't maybe sound like they would uh, fit on like a, a Jeremy Messersmith album, and I didn't really know what to do with them. And eventually I had enough of them, and I kept trying to record them, but couldn't really quite find a kind of a fit for it either. Um, so eventually I ended up meeting up with uh, John Mark Nelson and uh, we just started working on a lot of songs together and uh, uh, I would just go over to his house in St. Paul and um, uh, we would just try to make stuff up as, uh, make stuff up as best that we as best that we could and what ended up happening was a real sort of like a stripping down of kind of like the the normal uh, or at least the some of the stuff that I've gotten used to doing over the years. So um, we stripped away like, you know, orchestral arrangements, stripped away rock and really just reduced every single song down to just my voice, uh, which even that we tried to do as quietly and as small as possible. Uh, and then we just framed everything around that. So really everything that was kind of like the, the, the nail that we hung, you know, everything else on was just uh, 
was just a, a vocal take. And uh, it was a really, really kind of, I just remember laughing a lot and it being very goofy, uh, which I think was like a, a good thing for just how kind of difficult some of the songs were. Yeah, I'm surprised to hear you saying that you're laughing because when you told me about this project for the first time, you said, get ready, it's going to be very sad. <laughs> yeah, it was it was not super uncommon to just kind of like sing a take and then cry for a bit uh, and then, you know, then try it again. Or uh, and I think that's that's why we ended up laughing. It was just like so intense. Like it was it was pretty common for John Mark to have like a. Uh, you know, just a goofy YouTube video queued up afterwards to just like kind of, <laughs> just like kind of do some, get some kind of a, a release, I guess. I'm very, very grateful to him for that. Oh, it reminds me of that Dolly Parton quote from Steel Magnolias, laughing through tears is my favorite emotion. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, something like that. <laughs> Uh, well, aside from the emotional roller coaster of the project, what else do you think sets this as aside from your solo work? Uh, I think the the biggest thing is that um, usually when I sit down to to write, I I have like an audience in mind, and sometimes it's like maybe a general kind of audience, or uh, or it may just be like a person that I'm writing a song for, and. Um, and it feels like all these songs weren't really written for anybody except for me. And um, I kind of wanted them to be a little more inward facing. It didn't seem like maybe they needed to, you know, <laughs> have, an, have an enormous release. I kind of wanted it to be like songs that like are very specific uh, and maybe it's something that people stumble across and kind of find and is, and is meaningful to them. But uh, um, I think it was just important for me to to write them. And I think that's maybe the, the biggest difference. Do you feel a sense of freedom when something isn't tied to your own name? Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it reminds me of, oh, like putting out like my first album, you know, uh, it's like, well, I don't really know what to do. What if we just like put some things on the internet? Oh, we can do anything we want. We can tank this project ourselves. Like this is very exciting. There's a real, there's a real sense of agency there. Uh, so I don't know. We're just going to try a bunch of kind of crazy things. Already the release is a bit insane. Like just doing a song, you know, like two songs a month for six months. But um, it seemed to make sense to me as uh, it just seemed difficult to even process music like there's just a lot going on and asking somebody to sit down and listen to a full album for like a half hour uh, it just seems like a really big ask so uh i kind of thought i'd just dole it out in in kind of chunks that maybe people can uh can process and, and digest yeah i'm really impressed by artists who can create in this environment too as you said it's just such an intense year full of so many different dramatic unravelings in so many ways of our community and our society. Um, how are you able to write or have you been able to write a lot of new material in the last like six to eight months? Uh, I have been writing a bit, not nearly as much as I normally would, and it's really difficult. And I've found that the greatest challenge for me at the moment is um, when everything is kind of disintegrating, you know, that's a that's a time for real reflection. And especially as a as a white guy, I don't really feel like I can trust my narrative or my perspective. And that makes it hard to single down like a point of view when I'm writing something. So uh, I've been spending a lot of time just reading and writing some, but um, not really being too attached to it. Uh, it feels like everybody is kind of upgrading their their worldviews slash internal firmware uh very rapidly and um uh, most of the stuff i've been writing has been really just kind of bizarre and strange trying to keep up with just what what the headlines are to be honest yeah that makes a lot of sense well i want to hear some more music and then we'll keep chatting i want to know what you've been up to other activities you've been up to in your quarantine and i might have to ask you about your cookie project <laughs> <laughs> just a Got little it. bit um but tell me about the song uh hurts me more than it hurts you which we're gonna hear next oh it's uh 
it's a little acoustic ditty about something that I I heard a lot uh, when I was a kid and uh, and thought that I should kind of go back and and examine. All right. Well, here's another song from Mixtape for the Milky Way. It's here on Sounds Like Home. Your grandpa was a saint, a perfect gentleman. His daddy was a bitter cuss. Beat him till he couldn't stand Your grandpa made a vow To never lay a hand On any of his children I always did admire that But I'm sure that he'd forgive me For what I'm about to do And I know this might sound crazy But this hurts me more than it hurts you Spare the rod and spoil the child Is what the Bible says Lately I've been reading Highlighting favorite passages For God so loved the world He sent His only Son To bleed and die, crucified Pay the price for everyone And I'm sure when Christ was dying His body torn and bruised That's when God the Father said This hurts me more than it hurts you Someone's gotta save your soul From burning up in hell Don't you ever doubt it, boy You brought this on yourself Come here and take your licks Get up off the floor Be a man, move your hands Or I'll give you twenty more Well, you'll never get to heaven That kind of attitude You better stop your crying Or I'll break you right in two And I know this might sound crazy But this hurts me more than it hurts you And I know this might sound crazy, but this hurts me more than it hurts you. Hey, if you're just joining us, this is Sounds Like Home, the current virtual festival showcasing Minnesota music. I'm Andrea Swenson, and I'm connected right now with Mixtape for the Milky Way, a new project from Jeremy Messersmith. And that was a song called Hurts Me More Than It Hurts You. So we've been talking a little bit about this year and your new project. And I just wanted to ask you, um, you know, how has this year been for you as an artist who is so used to performing out in front of people and I'm thinking especially about you know with your ukulele project and your living room shows like you are doing some very intimate performances and to not have that kind of outlet how has that been for as an adjustment for you uh <laughs> it feels very strange and and I found that um keeping myself busy with some kind of like very tangible projects uh feels quite good it's like I'm missing the you know shows are the way that I kind of like practice and refine songs and um, to not kind of have you know the the feedback that an audience can give you if they're bored or not uh, just kind of feels like a like a link has been severed in my creative process and um, I've been trying to recreate that in a couple different ways I'm doing a, a song a day project this month with a few uh, uh, Twin Cities artists and where we all write and we upload what we write every day to a little Google Drive and then we meet up once a week and laugh about how bad our songs are and uh but also shower each other with affirmation and all that stuff and that's been uh that's been kind of a, a real help um for me just having like a ru routine is um is quite comforting and i find that i get a lot uh, i find a lot of solace and comfort in that and having kind of a you know set things i do every day uh, there's that, I think it's Andy Warhol who said that um, to be happy, you should focus on the things you do once in a lifetime and every day. And um, I'm just focusing on the everyday stuff at the moment. Oh, oh and okay. yes, that, that 
That would include uh, uh, this uh, cookie cookbook that I've been cooking through. Uh, just as like, a, I don't know how far I'll, I'll go with it. I think I'm, I'm at like cookie 12 out of 100 or something. But um, so far it appears that there's an infinite demand in the universe for cookies like nobody nobody ever says no to a cookie so people are like where jerry you you're making these cookies and where are they all going like they disappear the mailman gets some the neighbors get some you know i'm driving by i drop some at a friend's place and yeah uh, yeah so those are a couple I like things that. <laughs> well it's yeah, i've gotten very recently into trying to bake as well i'm going down the bread rabbit hole at the moment and there is something kind of comforting about well, there's so much that is hard to control in the world right now or hard to know we just don't know what the future looks like in, mm -hmm. in so many ways but mm -hmm. you do know that the bread's gonna rise and maybe after an hour and a half it'll go in the oven and it, there's just something really comforting about it <laughs> <laughs> yeah yes that is that is totally true uh it's like kind of a, uh, there's this really fascinating book called uh, Pleasure Activism by Adrian Murray Brown. And um, uh, with one of our, our great pleasures being kind of like taken away uh, in, in music and, you know, just gathering together and stuff, uh, I, I think I'm just kind of compensating in, in other ways. And um, yeah. So um, this is kind of a heady question for you, but it's something I've been thinking about a lot. Um, you know, we're basically on pause in a lot of ways as a music community and in some ways in shock as well, just because of so many different uprisings and reckonings that have happened over the year. Are there things that you feel like this would be just a prime time to adjust or am amend or, or change as we head into whatever our next phase is going to look like when we do get to have live shows again and when people do get to go on tour and do the quote unquote normal um, music things. Anything mm. that comes to mind? Wow. Well, I mean, <laughs> uh, I, I guess I'm not sure, at least speaking specifically to like uh, music stuff. Um, I feel like most of at least my energy for imagining the future has been focused uh, politically. And um, after the election, I was like, okay, this is, uh, this is gonna still be a lot of work. And uh, I just had the thought that maybe I should really be focusing a lot more in kind of my uh, local community and, um, uh, and focusing on just, you know, connecting with, uh, with neighbors, connecting with real like hyper local politics that maybe, uh, Kind of the actual place where i can affect uh, the most change but as far as like the big stuff uh i don't know i think whatever it is is probably going to happen um organically and uh likely not something that i would be able to predict but i'm hopeful that um that some of the systems will be more fair be more equitable just all those all those good things yeah it's hard to think about in the big long term because there is again so much unknowable i mean we hope that the venues all pull through and are able to reopen and that we all will get to be together again in a way that feels normal and um healing mm -hmm. to all of us but yeah i'm just curious it's yeah. something i'm meditating on a lot these days i'm i'm very curious about with uh all of the the local weekly zine you know city pages shutting down and stuff um what fills that gap and i'm, I'm not really convinced that social media will will do that. And um, I'm just kind of wondering maybe what that looks like in the future. Again, I don't know, but I'm really find out. Me too. I think it will be something. And like you, I don't know that I'll be the one to predict it, but I'm excited to see it when it happens. Well, uh, thanks for going down that road with me. <laughs> um, I would love to hear about your last song, Video Games. And this one has a video to accompany it, right? I got a little sneak peek of it. Um, tell me about this song and also the, the video that you made to go along with it. Sure. Uh, it's called Video Games. And um, I had wanted to write a song about video games for a long time. And I've kind of written around it for a bit. And there's... Uh, you know, Alana Del Rey and now Sufjan have songs about it. Um, and it always felt like they're kind of writing from the outside. And I wanted to write something about video games from the inside about maybe what it actually is. And um, I think that video games can be a really beautiful, meditative, uh, near religious experience. And um, 
I just think that's a really beautiful thing. Like, uh, like seeing any artist, seeing somebody who's incredible at something, it's, uh, it's really wonderful. So, uh, yeah, that's the song. Uh, I guess the video, uh, I uh, hooked up with my longtime collaborator, Eric Power, and um, I just told him, I mean, at this point, I don't really tell him much of what to do. I'll just send a concept and he just is, he's a, you know, if he's excited about it, then it's going to be great. And I just said, let's tell the history of video games, like all of them. And uh, we collaborated and we, we made a huge list of all of our favorite games that we played like throughout our lives. And, um, and we just tried to put them in uh, as many as we, as we could. Oh. I know that this is a departure from your um, solo material, but something about this song reminds me of early, early Jeremy Messersmith, like the first songs that I ever heard from you. <laughs> it's really nice. Ah. Oh, good. <laughs> well, thanks so much for participating in Sounds Like Home. It's just so lovely to see you and catch up with you for a little bit. And I really appreciate you sharing your music with us as well. The new project is Mixtape for the Milky Way by Jeremy Messersmith, and we'll get another song before we bid you adieu. This is Video Games here on Sounds Like Home. young I played video games castles and dungeons and damsels to save every night in the dark I would play I played on a flickering color TV I played with my forehead pressed up to the screen and I played until I catch fire But for a little while I knew that I couldn't lose And nothing in the world could tear me away When I grew up I played video games in basement apartments and empty arcades And I learned it was all just a joke There were no kingdoms or damsels to free No guardian angels that I'd ever seen And no gods but the ones that we made For a little while I knew that I couldn't lose And nothing in the world could tear me away Life isn't much like a video game Sometimes it's hard and there's nowhere to save And you can't Start it over again So every day I play video games Guess I don't know what you want me to say I just don't want to cry anymore Thanks for tuning in to Sounds Like Home, a virtual festival celebrating Minnesota music. Sounds Like Home and the artist performing during the festival is sponsored by Go Athletic Apparel and made possible by Minnesota's Legacy Amendment and you. Your support keeps the current strong and makes sure that independent music and the emerging artists featured today always have a home on the current. We are immensely grateful all month long. We're saying thank you with special programming as part of our month of gratitude. All Sounds Like Home sessions will be archived at thecurrent.org because great music lives here. Thank you.
Hey everybody, thanks so much for tuning in to another installment of Sounds Like Home. This is the fourth time that we have done this. It's a celebration of Minnesota music and it's a chance to connect with artists virtually and see how they're doing and hear some new music and some live performances. My guest right now is Muja Messiah. I'm so excited to talk to Muja. I'm just going to go ahead and say, and this isn't hyperbole, I think you might be the most prolific artist in the Twin Cities right now. You have been churning out so much material and I'm really excited to talk to you about that. How are you doing today? Thank you. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm so glad that you could do this. So we're going to start with a performance and then we'll chat a little bit more about what you've been up to. What can you tell us about this first song? It's an acapella performance, right? Yes, it is. It's, uh, it's called The President is a Hack. And uh, it's kind of just my personal opinion on our former president, Mr. 45. All right, here's Muja Messiah performing for Sounds Like Home. Oh, hey, I didn't know you guys were here. Welcome. The president's a hack, Klan Klux Clue, and I'll be goddamn if Mike Pence ain't too. Melania's a clone, daddy was a stem cell, post office closed. Anybody seen the mail? For every person, woman, man, camera, TV. From the land where they put the smallpox inside the teepee. There's a big difference between g Easy and Young Jeezy. Please believe me completely, it was written in graffiti. Only Trump we acknowledge is Tiana, that's on my mama, bitch. Twelve years later, this prick still on Obama. Selfish brat, shut the hell up and relax. Always fronting on blacks, that's why his mama hunched back. He don't deal with the facts, pathological liar. GOP got him gas, United States is on fire. Half of rural America is addicted to meth. The conservative right blaming the radical left. What the hell do that mean when they say radical left? Where I'm from, that's a threat. That's how they whack Malcolm X. Wakanda forever, we are the sun, moon, and stars. The guard got seven bullet scars for having a knife in his car. While Confederate Kyle facing life behind bars, why even take it to trial? We've seen it with our own eyes, that guy is guilty as charged. If he get off, no surprise, it's time to mobilize. It's over for you, 45, the president's a rap. Clan Klux Clue, and I'll be goddamn if Mike Pence sank too. Melania's a clone, daddy was a stem cell, post office closed. Anybody seen the mail? Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Muja Messiah. That was Muja Messiah performing for Sounds Like Home. This is the fourth installment of the Currents Virtual Festival showcasing Minnesota artists. And Muja, you have been producing so much music this year. You are on upwards of 25, 26 weeks of your Messiah Mondays, in addition to putting out a full-length record this year, Flowers Blossom on Top of Coffins. I just want to know about, you know, what your 2020 has been like so far and how have you stayed so prolific and productive this year? I'm not going to lie. The, the productivity and motivation came from lack thereof. Um, at first I was, I had no motivation, you know, um, I, had, I, I produced my album Flowers Blossom on Top of Coffins with DJ Name before the pandemic hit and right when it hit, we didn't have no way to promote it. And I kind of got depressed and didn't know which way to turn. And uh, my wife, Maria, Maria Issa, uh, when the country closed down, suggested that I go get us a, a, a small studio set up because we weren't going to be able to go to the studio anymore. So I'm not going to lie, Andrea, I was when the quarantine hit, I was I was just smoking Newports, eating donuts and drinking Hennessy for like two months. Just, you know, kind of like, when is this going to be over? When is this going to be over? And when I got tired of just waiting on the world, I decided to, no, I'm going to I'm gonna make the world wait on me. I'm going to do something productive with my time. I'm going to be creative because I was seeing people who were struggling with, with the situation. And, you know, it, it kind of it went from pandemic to crisis, you know, with the mental 
mental health and physical health and everything and and alcohol i knew everybody i know was just drinking themselves into oblivion so i wanted to uh i started going back into the gym and i started recording and and what happened was is i i figured out how to record myself i had never done that so once i did that i kept waking up and a lot of those songs i created with my baby sitting on my lap you know eating eating while i'm recording you know my wife in the kitchen cooking like i'm trying to get it done while i have the time before i gotta lay her down for a nap or before my wife needs to come in and use the studio or before i gotta take out the trash you know so before i gotta work so i uh it just became habitual and i um i kind of got consumed with the process because it helped me um spiritually and mentally and um and musically yeah that is so inspiring to me i can definitely relate to the baby on one hip <laughs> while you're trying to c accomplish something in your home and it is hard to make that time and to stay focused and to have your creative outlets but it's just so inspiring to me that you've been able to do that despite everything that we've all gone through this year if you if you broke down some of those messiah mondays and and to, took the music out and just had the acapella you could definitely hear my daughter like in the background of some of them like she's just sitting there talking and i and i don't redo it enough i just leave it in there to make it you know for all a part of the process <laughs> i think if you listen pretty closely to the local show you can also hear my daughter wailing in the background yeah. <laughs> not wanting to go to bed yeah <laughs> yeah yeah uh well, the last time we spoke was um, immediately following the George Floyd death, and the city has gone through so much. Twin Cities have gone through so much. And you mentioned that your album, Flowers Blossom on Top of Coffins, was recorded before the pandemic. But when I listened to it, it felt so rooted in this year, which, I mean, I, I think there's a lot of reasons for that. You know, obviously, these issues that we're confronting have been going on for a long time. But tell me about the process of putting out this record specifically in the summer of 2020. We started that album right when the year began. And one of my mentors had passed, um, Flinch, rest in peace, Flinch. And um, it was and the guy that I was recording with, the engineer, had learned from Flinch and I had learned from Flinch as well, you know, in the past, maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago, he was a staple for us. And we felt bad um, about what was going on. Then I had another uh, person pass. And then um, I don't, I forgot who, but Lexi, Lexi Alige had passed. And that really hit us hard, you know, because you know, she was a she was a, a child almost. You know, she was probably what nineteen twenty, and we looked up to her as far as lyrically and her lyrical. You know, she was just an amazing artist, and that kind of hit us hard. And then Kobe died, and then it was like we got to do something. We got to talk about the pain, but we got to also. We I always tell people, you know, you gotta, you know, the, the, the depression and the pain is a part of life. People forget to tell you about that. They tell you either get over it or learn to deal with it or, or stop being depressed. But what people don't tell you is that you gotta learn to live with it. You gotta learn to be able to still be productive with the pain, with the depression, not wanting to do it. Because no matter how good life's going, something bad is bound to happen. And no matter how bad it's doing, something good's bound to happen. So with that being said, I thought about it, you know, despite all the death around us and the negativity, flowers will blossom on top of coffins. And it's, you know, you know, you know, you bury somebody underground and what what's the first thing you do is you put flowers and the flowers, you know, they grow and they help the ground grow. And um, I seen a thing recently where they... Uh, you can be buried you can be you can have a, a tree instead of like a gravestone you know you can have a tree plant a tree above you and people can come visit that tree at your grave site instead which i thought was an awesome idea so that's just a basic um understanding of what i was trying to to get out is that you know despite the negativity you gotta always look for a better day and the flowers are gonna blossom nothing's gonna stop that you know so that was the yeah. that was the theme for the album that's beautiful. And that was, it was sad back then. So since then, it's gotten even sadder, which is crazier. You know, it's just, um, 
But, you know, I look forward to uh, always, always try to be optimistic, you know, even about my pessimism. Even when I'm pessimistic, I know that I'm optimistic about my pessimist, pessimisticism. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Yeah. Well, let's hear another performance and then we'll chat a little bit more. Um, the next song that you're going to perform is called Pen Game. What can you tell us about this one? In, well, Pen Game is me kind of singing a little bit. It's a little different approach. I wanted to get a singer on it and then I was like, why? Everybody else sings. Why can't I sing, right? So I sang a little bit on there. I didn't go too far, but I said... Um, I said, uh, plants give us power, but the power plants is killing us. So it's kind of just about the same thing we're talking about. It's about society and, and the struggles that we go through. And, you know, how, you know, the man-made things are killing the world and it's killing us. But we got to remain positive. You know, we got to remain focused because life goes on, man. Life goes on with or without you. Not you, Andrea, but you know, with, 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 with. <laughs> so people need to understand that and the, and the cycle continues no matter what, and it's going to get better no matter what. I appreciate that. All right. Well, if you're just joining us, Muja Masai is here. We're going to hear another live performance and we'll chat a little bit more. This is Pen Game on Sounds Like Home. Hooks, what's good, man? What's good, man? Yeah. Middle finger in the air, top down, swim the fuck 12, ask me if I'm scared, I ain't even bought a gun still, small phone feeling like a motherfucking dumbbell, cell tower poison in my brother blood cells, where I'm from we either make the NFL or making drug deals, if I could I would've killed Donald Rumsfeld, OG told me son chill, I said the son don't chill, we can get it jumping like jumping Jim Brunzel, pulling on my leg, hitch hiking on my coattails, had to cut them off, smooth off like my coat nails, same old spiel, time to power up the force field, pigs don't kill you out here, then the pork wheel, 20 bucks an hour ain't enough for me to live it up. Plants give us power, but the power plant killing us. They just shot another man while his hands was in the cuffs. I'm praying for us all, goddamn. Feels like I've been here before, so that would explain. Hey, why my pen game is so insane. Ooh, Cause I be spitting games slow up, you might learn something. All my shit is playing. Roll up, let's burn something. The person remains all I wanna know. From the land of contaminated waters, when it rains, it pours. Sons abandoned by fathers, illegal restraining orders. Investigated reporters, medication gets ordered to make up for the shortage across Canadian borders. Slavery got abolished, but freedom is still a privilege. Imagine what would have happened if Indians killed the pilgrims. The difference between me and the average villain. I'm a savage chameleon in the cracks to your ceiling. Catch me in the back of your building, selling crack to your children. No cap, it's all capitalism. All the smack you just for living and justify my redemption. But a man in my position should put his hands on his victims, rather use ammunition, too many cameras is listening, hit him from a block away, that's safe social distancing, <laughs> feels like I've been here before, so that would explain, hey, why my pen game is so insane, Ooh, cause I be spitting game So what you might learn something All my shit is flame Roll up, let's The question remains All I wanna know Y'all yeah. lucky I can't sing Current, what's good? Twin Cities, what's good worldwide? Messiah Monday mixtape Yeah If you're just joining us, this is Sounds Like Home, our virtual streaming festival celebrating Minnesota music. And I'm here with Muja Messiah right now. We just heard a performance of the song Pen Game. And Muja, you just told me a little something. This is going to be getting an official release. It was part of your Messiah Monday series that you've been doing every Monday on social media, which I've been loving following. You've been so prolific this year. And we're going to have a chance to revisit all this material. What can you tell me about this new release that you're getting ready for? Uh, well, it's the Messiah Monday Mixtape Volume 1. It's probably 70 or 80 minutes of just back to back to back to back. There's a few new original songs on there as well. 
I kind of look at it like my uh, audio business card. If somebody wanted me to describe who I was or want to know what I do, well, put in this mixtape and you'll you'll totally, within about four or five minutes, you'll totally get the impression of who I am as a person. And I'm working with Mr. Peter Parker hosting it. Um, and I look forward to the project. I got a, a an amazing album cover for this that people, it's going to really kind of, uh, it's going to ruffle some feathers. Um, but uh, it needs to be addressed because um, there's some evils out there that need to be addressed. And we have a big trial coming up with Derek COVID. I mean, Derek Chauvin. So I call him Derek COVID. But um, uh, so this album is just to bring awareness to what's going on in Minneapolis. Because every Messiah Monday is basically a week by week timeline of what's taking place in the at ground zero minneapolis is ground zero for 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 the uprise in america and i remember i read an article about five six years ago where they said minneapolis would be the next ferguson and i and i never forgot that article and i was like why would he say that? You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, I get chills thinking about it. And I was like, why would this guy say that? And I started you know, looking around. And I was like, he might be right. And then when it really happened, I just, I went back to that article and was just blown away that somebody could predict that. And uh, that's what this mixtape is all about. And it's a lot of fun. It's not just, it's not all sadness. It's a lot of fun and a lot of humor in it because, you know, you got to, what they say, you can get more you can get more bees with honey than vinegar. You know what I'm saying? And I want to disguise it a little bit and, you know, make it a little playful. But it's a serious situation we got going on here. And I don't want people to forget what's going on here. And I don't want think, people to think that Biden and Harris means that everything is all good. And we need to be reminded that there's a lot of a lot of things to work on. And um, and I think it's a good thing that's happening right now. Despite the negativity, white white people... Uh, you know, in one of the songs I said, it's not getting better for blacks, it's getting worse for whites. And I think that the playing field is leveling financially in the in the city, in the economy. I had a friend, I had a black Trump supporter friend tell me two weeks ago that Trump got the economy booming. So I drove past Tent City and I filmed it and I showed him and I sent it to him and I said, oh yeah, Trump got the economy booming. I've never seen this many tents in my city, you know, so that's what this whole... That's what my movement's always been about with 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 everything. It's just it's it's just social justice, humor, and shock value. And I want people to listen and be shocked and I want people to laugh and I want them to feel good and I want them to feel terrible. And I want people to look within themselves and and understand that you're not better than anybody, you know? And we're all in this together. And um just to love one another, man, you know, and I think that's what this, that's what Messiah Monday is all about, you know, don't hate yourself, don't hate nobody, and stop hating on Monday, Monday is the best day of the week, it's time to get your stuff together, you know what I'm saying, Monday gets a bad rap. <laughs> uh, we are so lucky to have your voice in this time, and I've been thinking a lot about, you know, this year is just so historic, especially here in Minneapolis, and, you know, what we're going to look back on, and I imagine people's you know, journals are going to get entered into the historical society and all the art that was created. And you've basically been creating like a an open journal that we can all read and share that is a chronicle of, of your experiences this year and your feelings about it yes. and your reflections on it. And that's just so valuable. And I'm just really glad to hear that it's getting this proper release and it'll all get packaged together so people can experience it in in one setting so thank you so much and for it's it's all it's, of your it's work. for our it's for the twin city thank you thank you and i just want to say it's for it's it it's for the world but it is for us the twin cities it's for the somali community the native community the the white community the black community north side south side because what i realized in the uh in the up is that we did all come together and there's you know, we all have one common enemy, man, and it's the it's the and it's our neighbors, unfortunately. But it's police who think that they're not our neighbors. They think that they're better than us or different from us. It's politicians who who don't want to pass certain bills, whether it's insulin or whether it's you know just rights for other people, because they think they're in a different place. But once you see 
your city boarded up, torn up, and you can't buy groceries no matter what tax bracket you're in, then you see we're all in this together. And there's a reason people want to go out there and tear up shit. And I don't agree with it, but if there's nothing else for them to do, you know, we have to provide it. So I just want to shout out everybody in the community who's been positive about it. And, um, and, and we're coming together, man. Yeah. I completely agree with that. It has been such an incredible thing to witness. I live right in Minneapolis, too, and it really does I'm sorry feel to like hear that. Are... I'm sorry to hear that. No. <laughs> oh, <come> I see. <laughs> No, my my daughter. I just moved my daughter out of up out of Minneapolis. She lived right off of Twenty Eighth and Lindale, and I got to move her a little further out of the city. And I, I was sad to say it, but I was like, I feel good that my daughter's not living in Minneapolis. But no, it's gonna come back. It's gonna bounce back. But it really hit me. I went to the studio in Minneapolis, and my guy said, "Bring some water." And I forgot to bring water. And I got there at about nine p.m. And he's like, "You didn't bring no water." I was like, "No, I go get some." He was like, "Where are you gonna go get it?" And I was like. And I looked on my phone and I was like, I got to go to St. Paul for water. I got to drive to Edina. I got to drive to Bloomington to buy water at 9 o'clock at night. Like, the after effects. And I was one of those guys where police mess with me. I'm tearing the city up. I'm tearing the city up. And now when you see it, you know, careful what you wish for. Because we're running out of resources in our own town because of that. And, you know, and who wins? Who wins, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's really been something. I was going to say, though, you know, I, I feel like I've gotten to know my neighbors better this year because yeah. we were went through a crisis together. And, you know, I was never on like a group text with the people on my block before. But now it's like people are really watching out for each other. And it's something Me that too. it's hard to Me explain. Too. Yeah, yes. it's hard to explain for people that aren't living through it. But it's it's really just incredible to witness. So. Anyway, thank you so much for um, sharing your art with us today. We're going to hear another performance of your song. And you said it February is when the mixtape will be coming out? No, the mixtape will be out uh, in about two weeks. Um, oh, okay. And, and then the album, I have an album coming out in February. I got some special features on that. I got Knuckle Bear Manifest, and I got Raekwon the Chef from the Wu-Tang Clan on this album. So... So I'm getting excited for that. This mixtape is really just going to be promotion for this album that I got coming up. And I say some things on this album. It's called A Cautionary Tale. And there's a reason I call it that because we got this. We got a song about tearing statues down. We got a song about uh, uh, how, how expensive bullets are. We got a song about the city council and the police. And we touch on all types. We got a song about daughters out here and protecting our daughters. So... We got a wide array of, uh, of if you want to know what's going on in the world, not just Minneapolis, you know, check me out. All right. Well, I can't wait to hear that. Definitely keep us in the loop when you've got the new music out. And thank you so for much sure. again for participating in Sounds Like Home. So we're going to hear one more song that is part of the Messiah Monday. And uh, the name is very evocative. I don't know if it needs a lot of explanation, but is there anything else you want to tell us about this song, 38th and Floyd? I wish my brother George was here. You know what I'm saying? That's all I want to say. Um, the song speaks for itself. Um, shout out to 38th in Chicago, man. I spent a lot of years on that corner, and it's crazy what it's turned into. I don't know if I agree with where police killed a man, it turned into a museum, but somehow it turned into a museum and, uh, and, um, and a tourist attraction, which is so weird, but America's obsession with death, you know what I'm saying? But this is 38th and Floyd, off of the Messiah Monday mixtape. Shout out to Twinkie Jiggles. Thank you so much, Muja. It's been so nice having you here for Sounds Like Home. Thank you for having me. Wow. I know, I know, I know. It's really good to see you. Oh, it's good to be seen, man. Yeah, it's good to be seen. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Good job for Sire. 38 from Floyd. Yeah, yes. Uh, yeah. Rap wizardry, black magic package in Italy at the Vatican Embassy off the coast of Tripoli. That's where they whack Gaddafi at for centuries. They've been enslaving overseas and the West Indies. I knew you never 
Diplomacy buried in cemeteries with the centipedes. I never had dinner with the president, nigga, please. That's why my enemy's enemy is my friend indeed. In a country led by inbreds that inbreed. I knew you never it. Vampires out of control as the city bleeds. All my clothes smell like garlic cloves and mint leaves. Let's talk about how history affected me, or should we talk about all the illegal hysterectomies, huh? You want the truth, you can't handle the truth I'm spooked cause everywhere I go there's cameras on the roof They say it's 99% survival rate if you get sick My nigga Pac said, I don't wanna be that 1% That's real shit What's the time, black man's time, don't ask me that We ain't grow up playing hacky sack We grew up in that ghetto habitat Packing the Mac in the back of the act Like pun and crack, every night we was under attack that's hunger loom, stomachs high with the moon Four kids in one room, Forbes list full of coons Divorces are soaring, the suicide rate boom If you ain't got your passport, you better get one At the crib board as fuck Battling depression, hoping that the country open up After the election True confessions of immaculate conceptions Waving the Mac 11 in the pastor's direction I knew you never <laughs> Jesus take the wheel, hoping I don't crash the Lexus Almost shed a tear driving past the aftermath of the wreckage from the uprise, survived the war. But I hardly recognize the South Side anymore. I knew you never I don't, I don't, I don't. It's like show and tell, they showing up from out of state. All these folks from out of town showing up on 38. They let Chauvin out on jail, we ain't showing no respect. On the real, that's some white male chauvinistic shit. I knew you never Fuck him. It's embarrassing to be American when you in debt Got the IRS giving people terroristic threats Imagine this, money don't even really exist They just made it up, like democracy, it's all a myth What's the time, black man's time, don't ask me that We ain't grow up playing hacky sack We grew up in that ghetto habitat Packing the Mac in the back of the act Like pun and crack, every night we was under attack as hunger looms, stomachs high with the moon Four kids in one room, Forbes list full of coons Divorces are soaring, the homicide rate boomed If you ain't got your passport, you better get one soon, Messiah It was hard from the start I knew you Thanks for tuning in to Sounds Like Home, a virtual festival celebrating Minnesota music. Sounds Like Home and the artists performing during the festival is sponsored by Go Athletic Apparel and made possible by Minnesota's Legacy Amendment and you. Your support keeps the current strong and makes sure that independent music and the emerging artists featured today always have a home on the current. We are immensely grateful all month long. We're saying thank you with special programming as part of our month of gratitude. All Sounds Like Home sessions will be archived at thecurrent.org because great music lives here. Thank you.